<laughs> okay. Well, let's see here. I don't suppose anyone wants to do the recap. By anyone, I mean one of these two. <laughs> it's okay. Sarah realized she started a religion. That's all I remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was definitely a well, highlight moment. <laughs> well, I mean, that tracks. Uh, Gee, dear. Please. I guess I can go through some yes! of those. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> oh, there's not as many just because we were also in the heat of the moment uh, acting it out. But uh, <laughs> let's see here. Um, I think we started with finding out that was it Weldon Dossey was the hunter hired to protect the town after Pell's incident because uh, we had the townsfolk kind of freaking out at the mansion. I found out that uh, some hunter was brought in to at least alleviate some of the concerns of the townsfolk. Uh, but Nathan uh, did not quite like the dude and <laughs> kicked him out of the mansion. Um, and proceeded to learn a little bit about uh, Nathan's past as far as being in a fight club and that he literally cannot die. Um, and some more details on that. Um, uh, as far as players, we learned. You were alone, I think. Right? From what I remember. Um, <clears throat> but then, we decided to plan, uh, Chara and Rowan decided to plan, like, a axe-throwing competition event to try and bring some light to the town. And that kind of helped with their mental state, so decided to start planning of how we can make that event happen. Yeah, I think the original intent was you guys were trying to convince Gallivar to get guards, like build some kind of law yeah. system um, protection because of everything going on. But yeah, then it turned into the <laughs> into that in order to get people's like ability to like oh you can throw an axe here you can protect people the best <laughs> measurement of one's skill well, Nathan slightly <laughs> disagreed with that plan, so now it's just a festival yep <laughs> uh, at one point we were talking with Kippen again and kind of started picking up that Kippen was lying about something uh and knew more details about past events, um, especially related into Nathan's past, where we learned that, see, Nathan was a captain of a ship that was named the Nathanel? The Nathan ship was the Karain. Ah, okay, someone else was saying, um, he, that was he just couldn't say Nathaniel him. properly. Yeah. yeah. Somehow his through his jumbled memories, he came out with Nathan, but the original name was Nathaniel. There we go. Um, and it turned out that Kippen was actually on board that ship at the same time as Nathan was the captain and was doing experimentations which was the cause of it blowing up and also had uh, me on board, which was why you ended up rescuing me and taking me as a baby to the port town. So big old connection between a lot of us. Aren't you supposed to be like a celestial battery or something like that for whatever Kippen was doing? Yeah. 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 So I was like, my blood was supposed to be the source for powering it. Um, Always the cute innocent ones that want to blow up things. I mean, it's Kippen. Do we really expect anything less? <laughs> I mean, I will still die for Kippen. <laughs> so we learned that kind of backstory, and then um, 
started doing a lot of walking around town and ran into Marigold Shandar, which was a speaker for Yala. Hmm. And uh, talked to her about the pop-up of Yala within the town and that it's been occurring more and more often. Uh, while Nathan, um, I think you were still hanging out at the mansion, weren't you, most of the time? Or you went to go somewhere else? I went to have a lunch with Kibben. That's right. Yeah. Your lunch date. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, you guys went to have lunch and learned a little more details again about Nathan um, as far as from a player's perspective of... <laughs> You being like half celestial, uh, mm. at least Kippen told you that, um, and that you used to have a pet that you used to ride around on. Apparently, uh, wasn't a dragon. It was a, a Kyren. Kyren. Mm -hmm. Kyren. 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 K i r i n. K i dash r i n. Beautiful. And also, while on your little lunch date, I believe that's when you discovered that Kippen has a crush on Esme, the dwarf. Uh... Oh, I figured that out long before the date. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but. Officially, it's like more than a crush. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Full infatuation. Yeah. Uh, and. Let's see, Chara and Rowan. Basically had a lot of back and forth banter while walking around town. Chara is unaware of if Rowan is actually hitting on her or not. Because <laughs> there is a whole back and forth about that. Um, and we ended up finding another spot with Gala, the Harvest Mother. And talked to a couple more followers and about why it popped up and how it popped up. Which proceeded to finally jar Chara's memory about the fact that a story was told to stop a previous event in which she created the idea of Yala that she completely forgot about and didn't realize the power that it has over getting people to feel safe and then start believing in it. And that's kind of where we left off as we return back to the mansion to meet up. Okay. It was a funny one, Marco. I recommend uh, watching it if you have a chance. Uh, when I get the chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of a lot of backstory on some. Um okay. So Oh God, how do I sign into D D Beyond now? Okay, no, I'm there. I'm good. <laughs> you might actually have to remember your sign-on and password. No, not even that. Like, it would just give me the options, like, sign in with Wizard, Google, oh, Apple, yeah. or Discord. And I was like, I did none of those. Okay. So as you guys... Know, I've got my character. <laughs> as you guys are at the dinner table, um, we kind of backtrack just a little real quick here um, to after... At, at the table at breakfast, when Chara is basically recruiting all of you to join her on this festival tournament of axe throwing, um, Nina, you were having none of it. You were just, mm, mm. Uh, and you and Liam both c kindly offered that you had other matters to attend to. Um, which, is there anything you guys had wanted to do? Um, I don't think so. I think, like, if I remember, I think, like, we were going off to talk to the townsfolk or, like, the shops to see if anyone wanted to, like, throw up a booth or something like that. But I assume it just turns into, like, Liam Aarons with Nina tagging along Okay. Behind. So I will leave it up to Liam if he had anything, but... I think she's just happy to get out and breathe fresh air and not be under immediate threat for a minute. 
I don't have anything really. I mean, okay. The only it, this is out of character. The only thing I was thinking of is at some point maybe I want to find an apothecary to see if I can somehow learn the poisoning my daggers feat. Okay. But that doesn't sound like a, a thing that we would do in that point. Okay. Probably not here in Westbridge since I killed the apothecary. <laughs> So somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. But at some point, that's on the radar cool. now. <clears throat> okay. So you guys then are all gathered back at the mansion. Um, you are all kind of just quietly eating a massive meal uh, before you. And everyone's kind of lost in their own thoughts. Um, you just kind of hear tinkering of silverware and plateware um and every now and then you'll see one of your glasses just fill up um and if no one has anything directly they want to discuss um i guess really quick refresh my memory what mm-hmm. happened with pell and grund are they staying in the manor with us mm-hmm. Did, have they gone elsewhere yeah no if i remember correctly they are in a room upstairs okay um i just wanted to clarify because i don't think i remember them getting mentioned in the episode i wasn't here for so yeah i uh, think they honestly we didn't really mention them much other than they were staying at the mansion for now um mm-hmm. probably exploring around cool and did we have any prisoners left to interrogate or did i think chara interrogated the one cult member that we caught Mm -hmm. and then i believe rowan sent her duck army down there to watch them (laughs) okay cool 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 yeah i don't think i have anything specific i'd rather just kind of start fresh since it's yeah my brain's a little little foggy okay so we'll say all of you Get a long rest. I'm going to hit that button. I don't think it does anything in my character sheet, but it doesn't hurt, just to be sure. It just feels good to hit the button. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. The next morning... Most of you woke, wake up fresh, renewed, except you, Nathan. You wake up in a cold sweat and I am going to once again need you to roll. Shit, where is it? Here, a d12 for me. Oh, one. Great. Okay. So <laughs> max hit points decreased by one. And yeah, all of you kind of you wake up in your perspective rooms. Uh, it is a cool, crisp day outside. Um, and the house seems quiet. Um, every now and then you hear some voices far off but other than that you hear the distant sound of a church bell and then nothing all of you come downstairs eventually um, and get a nice good breakfast Uh, yeah as all of you can join downstairs Um, at one point you see Gallagher just kind of drudge in, look at all of you. He's in a house coat, not his usual full, you know, breast coat and everything uh, or vest. Um, and he fills up a plate. He just kind of pauses and looks at all of you and mm, grunts before he walks back upstairs with his food. Before he leaves, mm-hmm. um, Nathan would actually call him for a second and be like, mm-hmm. Gallagher, you wouldn't happen to have a collection of books in this manner somewhere, would you? 
he doesn't turn around. Uh, after you call his name, he just pauses and you see his shoulders just kind of drop a little. And as you say that, he just points towards one direction. Appreciated. And Nathan will basically do the same. Fill up a plate and start walking in the pointed direction. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I want to say that is on. Oh, I gotta remember if that's first. I think that's second floor. Yeah, you eventually find on the second floor um, a nice big area uh, <clears throat> with quite a few bookcases. Uh, it's got a spiral staircase uh, that leads down back down to the first floor. Uh, right in the middle of the room, there is a hearth on each end, or sorry, just on the one far end. And then the south side has a nice desk as well as the East side has a desk, chairs, a couch, and bookshelves just line around the outer edges, as well as a row around the spiral staircase. Okay. Uh, what would you like me to roll for looking for specific books? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. You can either do... I mean, I would... I would say let's do investigation. Uh, 18. Okay. I would say, let's see here. <clears throat> you, you find one, you find a book that is something that looks like you would be looking for. Um, specifically, the title of it is Gods of the Multiverse and the planes they exist within. Okay. And yeah. Just gonna pop it open and munch while I read. Okay. And the rest of you? I think Nina sits kind of impatiently around the breakfast table and she goes, so uh, is this festival thing still happening or are we going to get back to the cults and stuff? You see Chara's head kind of pop up when you say cults and she's... <clears throat> um, hmm. Hmm. And she looks over towards Rowan. <laughs> Uh, festival, right? Or festival? I mean, we're not doing it anymore. It's on hold. That's that seemed to be the conclusion that I got mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. our walk yesterday. That's yeah. You started having second thoughts about gathering people. Okay, so we're not drawing attention to Westbridge. Yeah, that kind of seemed counterproductive to what we were trying to do. I mean, we need to do it at some point, but, you know, maybe maybe next year. Next year we're definitely doing it. There might be a slight bigger issue that happened, though. Is there? Well, I don't know if you could call it an issue. I, I feel like I feel like that's the wrong word. Well, uh, let's, let's get everyone's thoughts on this. <clears throat> so, you know, cults and things, you know, made by a leader, blah, 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 and sometimes what you say can lead to things, and it seems that uh, Chara here now has created a religion within the town. I remember spotting these uh, Yala, the Harvest Mother statues going up? Yeah, I think I remember you guys mentioning that. Yeah, I yeah. might have had a hand in that. 
And by might, she means she did. Well, mm-hmm. Yeah. When? How? Well, it was, you know, I was doing one of my meditation mm-hmm. things, trying to, you know, inquire of, I think I was trying to get us, I was trying to, I was doing things for our group, you know, we were about to head off to do things and I was trying to help. And, um, you know, people looked sad, so I, I was trying to encourage them, you know, and so we... Create a new goddess to encourage Well, you know, we, I just, it was awkward timing of, you know, the fields being fixed, us fixing it, and maybe, maybe my choice of words, you know what, I see this as a really good thing, guys. Like, really. I mean, this place was kind of dead. They were, you know, they have no law, nothing. They were just kind of barely existing. Now they have something to believe in, something to fight for. They have hope in something. I like this for them. So what about when we leave and they get no feedback? from the god and then they start to that won't happen no No. or you know they'll just transfer it to another god i mean do the gods really like talk with that many individuals like i know that you're special rowan and you get like you know blessings from erroneous and all of that but i don't think that many people actually get to commune with the gods i've never talked to one yeah me either anyone else at this table can raise a hand that they've talked to a god? Uh, And mine hasn't really been directly to Aronius. Yeah. Okay. I I feel like we're opening ourselves up to, like, a malevolent presence, like one of the many cults around us, kind of filling in that vacuum. Has anyone thought about that? That's the point. Chara Chara made it so that there wasn't a vacuum. There is now this benevolent... I headed Artist it off. God. But if she leaves and they don't hear from their god, it seems like someone else would be right to take that part. They haven't been hearing mm. from their god, though. It's it, not like... Not like literally here, but like, you know, things... You have literally seen things happen to me that have been not of my doing. When nothing, no prayers are answered in some sort of way. Don't you see that kind of, kind of cause a morale to then deteriorate again? I mean, that's just religion. Yeah, I mean, people come and go from Mm -hmm. faith all the time. I'm not going to win this one. Honestly, I think this is going to last for maybe a few years at best. And who's to say, you know, we have to leave? I mean, if Chara does come back, praise Yala. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I'm going to be Yala or anything. I mean, I made her up, but I should. But. Please don't. Don't start thinking about dressing up and coming out on the stage somewhere and doing some sort of re- reveal. Rowan, now. Rowan, Rowan, that's that's really gaudy. Like only only certain temples do that. Like, you know, war gods, like fertility gods, stuff like that. It's it's fine. This is a harvest I goddess. Like I feel like you shouldn't tell someone how they can come out. Hmm? Mm. Mm. You have nothing to say on this, Nathan? Oh, he's not there. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Rude of you not to notice. (laughs) Nina, by the way, is really just like being a smart ass about all of this. Like she's hyping Chara up just because. Like she doesn't necessarily (laughs) think this is a good or bad idea. She thinks it's just hilarious. So I literally just pictured Rowan too looking over to an empty chair and being like, Nathan, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It's not> <laughs> yep. Yeah, we, we, we can make that canon. It's fine. 
like, son of a... Um, okay, so we at least have one cult that is burgeoning in, in the area, and we'll keep an eye on it. And if it starts to fade in <laughs> its face, then we'll just make sure nothing else pops up. But in the meantime, don't we have, like, some place to go visit? Um, specific stone monastery or something? Well, I mean... We, we know that the leader of Marlos is, leads this or the Sacred Stone Monastery. Yeah, that. But, I mean, I, I still worry about how the town's folk are handling this situation and how we handle Hell and Grund. I mean, they still can't walk around town right now. I mean, but they can't stay hold up here. Perhaps we escort them on then. I mean, this is this whole like worrying about the townsfolk. This is kind of what I like warned y'all about when I was like, yeah, let's take the Zatarum off the, you know, the town and like, let's impose ourselves into this government and da, da, da. like this is not our actual responsibility until we made it our responsibility and i for one do not want to run a town princess though i may be <clears throat> i'm not saying anything about running the town but uh, i mean we got our good friend Gallagher over here that can do that I mean, I feel like we're leaving the town better off than we came into it. Sure, Are sure. Are we for sure? I mean, there's no more hags. We there's no more zen charms and terrain. And we fixed the contract problem. Yeah, your buddy Triskin. Yeah. I don't have to pay outrageous taxes. I appreciate this for them. And we're going to have a festival next year. And Galliver's going to get protection people in place. Like, So you think we're ready to just move on then? Well, we've we spent some time in town. Maybe we can just recommend a few particular people for Gallivar to keep counsel with, you know? Esme seems like a pretty strong individual. She might be able to intimidate some folks into shape and... Oh my god, I can't remember the fucking innkeeper's name. Haravan. Haravan. Can be a diplomat of sorts. He's very good with people and stuff. I mean, we just tell Gallivar that he shouldn't have to do this alone, but it doesn't have to be us either. Because he clearly needs help. That man was in a bath or a house robe. <laughs> house coat. What's wrong with being in a house coat? It's like... him. Man has shit to do. <laughs> Nathan. <laughs> we'll cut over to Nathan real quick here. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. You kind of scroll through it for a bit. Uh, just eyes going over the pages uh, before you find a chapter um, or a directory listing out the different planes. And you quickly find Eskart and you flip over to it and you you find that oh sorry it is hold on i gotta get my own notes up here it is <clears throat> one of the realms in the astral plane uh and you you kind of get a sense all the realms are somewhat 
balanced in a way where they go from chaos to law to neutral good evil like they've all got their set place and they exude some of these attributes to a degree um, in the grand scheme of things and Eastgard in particular is closer to the chaos side but it's still it's still good um and there's you specifically note that it is a got multiple levels within it and one thing of interest is the world tree uh which is no more but at one point in history the world tree um was a massive far bigger than the grandfather tree that you experienced this was world spanning this was plain spanning it had portals within it to different areas the roots and branches connected the other planes together um, and at one point actually at a very specific point during the blood wars which the book mentions the blood wars has existed for centuries long long thousands and thousands of years and the blood war is a ongoing war between demons and devils which are two entirely different sex um s-e-c-t-s <laughs> um they are demons coming from the abyss whereas devils come from hades um they are completely different uh and they have always been at war with one another they hate each other demons more so just because they love to cause chaos they don't care about anything they just love to do chaos whereas devils they are more lawful in their chaos like they're in their evil uh and so they've had this ongoing war and at one point though for the first time ever in history the war spilled over into another plane into Eastgard at the world tree and this was the point that the world tree got destroyed the gods at that time sent a group of celestials to fend them off and send them back to um, the abyss essentially but they failed they were massacred uh, as the two forces turned against them and after the celestial group was decimated they went back to fighting each other but ran off and went back to their own um, took their battle back to the abyss uh, as one of the more powerful gods the god over all the gods suddenly took notice and they feared this one um, it doesn't mention that god it just said it just mentions this is the over seer and so it discusses the rebuilding of east guard and how it was fundamentally changed um and how very few of the those that fought in the blood war actually survived and now it is the connections that were there before are no longer there 
travel between planes has become harder and more difficult. Um, you either have to have specific arcane magic that you have learned and practiced and are proficient with uh, to be able to travel across planes or rituals, items of power, specific things. Um, and that's about pretty much what you find. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Brent. Yeah. So coming back to the breakfast table, which Nathan, you continue to stay up there. Um, after that, I'll probably head back. To okay. The All right. Coming back to the breakfast mm -hmm. table. Um, you kind of find the group a little ways later, uh, finishing up their breakfast. Everyone's kind of sitting, discussing next steps. Um, currently, what you hear as you come into the room um, is... What's wrong with the jacket? <laughs> he has shit to do! <laughs> ah! There's your knight in shining armor. I shoot you a look. What did I do? It's first thing in the morning. And I wear all black, if you hadn't noticed. I'm not that shiny. Yeah, you're like especially not shiny today, too. You kind of look like shit. Are you okay? I got a bit of a migraine. I mean, shiny is just a state of mind, though. I always think you're, you're splendid. <sighs> Well, thank you very much, Liam. I appreciate that. Actually, Nina's not wrong. Like, are you okay? Yeah, I just I got a shadow dragon shoving a knife through my brain. So, what are we getting up to today? Wait a second. Still? Or mm. you're just... I need to go have a conversation with her at some point, by the way. I think that sounds like a good place to start. Wait, that, that's a me problem thing. I don't mean to interrupt your guys' thing. I'm sorry, we want to go back? Well, I need to go back, yes. Well, of course you want to go by yourself. I so mean... Here's the thing. You you kind of showed up and and joined our, our merry band, and so that means you're not going to be doing stuff so alone all the time anymore. Well, I didn't say alone. I just said I needed to go do it. But a you problem kind of becomes an us problem if it doesn't get handled. So I'd rather nip something that's giving you a migraine in the bud rather than let it visit, progress because my thing started out with little headaches and then became like full on possession hmm. so you know well, that's another thing for me to worry about nice but good to know here there's some bacon left so why are we going back to the dragon? Sweet. And he just sits down and starts. Uh, why do you need to talk to She's not happy with the amount of memories that I don't know, so she's shoving a metaphorical knife through my brain every night. There's good bacon this morning. Mm. I thought you said the deal was settled. It should be. Apparently, well, Kip's guessing. She's uh, playing the fine details. Mm. So I need to go get that handled or kill a dragon, one of the two. Somehow I knew we weren't going to like get out of there completely unscathed. That seems well, too easy. I'm no fine offense. with her having my memories. I don't give two shits. It's just a matter of she thinks, Kip thinks, I should say, that if I don't remember them, she believes that I haven't, I'm not giving them. Ah. Yeah. 
But didn't we also learn that Shadow Dragon is just like pain and suffering? So maybe this is just her way of beating off your pain and suffering. Most of just pain. I'm not really suffering that much. Really? The bags under your eyes say otherwise. That's just a lack of sleep. I've been through that many a times. All right. Well, if we're not going to go immediately to see the dragon, and she kind of shoots daggers in your direction, I think we need to figure out what to do with Pell and Grund, and then we need to start thinking about this next step in finding this whatever it is. I think maybe the orbs of power. Maybe we can get someone to escort them back to Red Larch. As Hell was only out here to give us the letter. Hmm. And escort or two, and maybe even a card of some sort to get them back safely. Who would you suggest? Roll me yeah, a perception check. Here. All of you can Is roll it? perception. All of us? Yeah. Oh god. First roll <laughs> of the night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> you're just getting them out early. Five. <laughs> Nine. I have never rolled a good perception roll as Nathan yet in this campaign. <laughs> yeah, you so really have been. Yeah, it yeah out early. it's canon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm it gonna stop rolling at this twelve. Point. That's sad. <clears throat> what did you roll, Nina? Twelve. Holy crap! Yeah, okay, all of you rolled shit. You get yeah. Well. Oh, I guess I should roll for. Uh, Kara's got a pretty high passive too. I think. Oh my gosh. Holy crap, yeah, she does. Yeah, she's like really hard to beat. Okay. Wise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Plus it, yeah. My god. Okay. Yeah, so at one point her eyes shift to the side of the room and uh, her ears twitch a little and she smirks and then looks back at all of you. <clears throat> Maybe we should invite the, you know, focus of the conversation in with us before making decisions for them. And you now hear a little shuffling next to the door. I you, give a modeling him. You see a little face peek around. The blonde hair just kind of short blonde hair just kind of falls forward. One little eye peeks around the corner. Oh, hey there, little one. Want some bacon? She kind of ducks back behind for a long moment, but a second later you hear a thump, 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 and a large orc comes around the corner and makes his way to the table and the whole hand grasps the plate out of yours. And he just starts eating before he pauses for a moment and then comes back towards the door frame, sits down cross-legged and offers some. You see a hand reach across and take it. Good, because oh, uh, Liam was about to yell like grunt, uh, he better be sharing that. <laughs> Hell, come in. No. What's wrong, Hell? You don't want to go. You can't make me. Yeah, out of curiosity, why are you trying to send him back to Red Flark? I'm, I'm curious myself. I'm a little out of the group on this one. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to, but she's that's where she's from and has family there. Right. She, she can't come with us. 
But that oh, doesn't yeah. necessarily mean she has to go home. You think she's safe being out there, quote unquote, alone? Look what happened here. Or here. I mean, <clears throat> Pell, would you like to make a friend? I have friends. But would you like to make a friend here? In the mansion? Not just in the mansion. I, I think there is someone that you can become very good friends with who I think has a very cool frog. Nina, like, picks up what Liam's putting down and is like, Oh, actually, that's not a bad idea. Like, if they wanted to stay here in Westbridge, Triskin might need help around the shop. Maybe Grun can help while Pell and Click work the Emporium. You can and help Triskin can, find somebody some... Somebody can help them write a letter to send home to let their family know they're okay. I mean, I, I've worked in Balavo's shop. I can, I can work in a shop. But Pell... Her, her and her and she's kind of like, Red Larch was destroyed, Westbridge isn't yet. But Pell, you gotta remember, this is a special shop. They have special items. Things that, as you learn, might be good to know for future adventures. So get really good at sneaking. Get really good at identifying and learning what some of these items are. Oh. We don't we don't steal from clicks. Clicks clicks is someone we want to help. They can be a friend. Okay. And the more you help, the more they want to help you. All right. No, I, I can I can do that. Is that that mean I can stay. Does anyone have a problem with that? I mean, other than the fact that I would say, you know what? You're going to have to go talk to them by yourself and get an interview and get hired. So you're going to have to be the best presentable version of yourself. Because we can't just give you this job in the shop. No, I mean, I, I've gotten hired before. Valable hired me. I I, t I took care of all the other kids. I was the one in charge of them all. And I had I had multiple jobs back in Red Large. Sounds good to me. Like I said, we're gonna figure out how to let your family know you're okay. Mm. Yeah, I can. Don't shoulder shrug me. I I'll write the letter back to them. I don't even know you. I don't think you get a say in this. Hell. He well, just nice. looks at her and doesn't lose eye contact at all and just smiles and just silently keeps looking at her. <laughs> she goes into a staring contest. Well, let's settle then. I will write home. She and Grun can find jobs here and help teach the locals not to be so racist. What? <laughs> he blinked. <laughs> what? Uh. Oh. Just... Yeah. The misunderstanding with Grund, I think it was because they were scared of him, and they don't see many orcs around here. But they'll learn. Yeah, they'll see how great you are. And she, like, pats Grund's shoulder. Mm -hmm. Grund, I need you to do me a very big favor. Mm. I need you to make sure that Pell and Clix and Triskin, the people who own the shop, they're safe too. Can I sell pickles? 
you can sell as many pickles as you want. <laughs> but you got to talk to them about being able to set up a, sh a stall. Okay. Grand like this deal. Liam shakes his hand. Come, come and hop up on this stool here, Tell if you don't mind. That was really weird how you asked that. Sure. Okay. She comes over and hands on the table, climbs up onto it. What are you going to adult me to? Nina leans over to Liam and goes, Yeah, she really is one of us, isn't she? A little bit. Is there a reason that you don't want to go back to Red Large? Are you sure about this? Yeah, I'm sure. Are you running from something? Boringness. Plus, he said he'd teach me things. She throws a thumb over towards Liam. And then he fucking left. Liam's just gonna say language. Sorry. And but you do realize we are gonna be leaving again. Which means you will be here without him. Liam's gonna stand behind uh, Rowan, uh, snap his fingers, and uh, hold on. Uh, snap his fingers and uh, cast the cantrip Silent Image. Uh, and it's gonna take the form of a sign behind uh, Rowan, pointing down at Rowan with the words buzzkill on it. <laughs> you, Rowan, you see her pal's eyes just kind of briefly look up and she doesn't react until she looks down back at you and just, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? You do realize that you will be left here alone again because we we still have a lot of travel to do so Liam's not going to be able to stick around I mean well I guess I can give him I can't speak for him fully but no but at least he'll come back I will pal I will you didn't think we'd come back to Red Lodge you didn't he's got a point <laughs> but not much time has truly passed it could be. I'm like a year before we turn. Eight years old. It felt like forever, and that's me saying that nicely without a cuss word. Liam is gonna thumbs up. Help. Positive reinforcement. What I'm getting at is. Us going from town to town doesn't mean that you'd be able to just keep moving town to town and showing up. There's a lot of danger out there. To... But I'm not saying you're weak. You you know how to hold yourself, but... She reaches back and pulls out Razor. Which, Nathan, you see is a dagger. I've really been practicing. And she kind of flips it and it twirls over her wrist and she recatches it. Looks up at Liam. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Tucks it back. Well, now we know who will train the new uh, town guard. I can't are, do that. Are you really encouraging this? I'm sorry, I will shut up. Nina sits back down and starts eating. 
Look, I are... I'm not stupid, all right? I know I, I can't go with you to fight whatever fuckers it was that destroyed Red Lark. Sorry. But... If you don't want... I don't want you to think I'm like some kind of burden on you or anything. You're not a burden. Who thought? Who said that? Rowan, what are you? What are you saying to our ward? It's not our ward, Liam. I'm not saying you're a burden because we do care about you. I'm thinking about your safety. Well, I'll think of my safety too. Because I know you may feel strong and everything, but I'm not joking about the dangers out there. No, I know. I know, all kidding aside, I could barely hold up your shield that you gave me. I know I have a lot of learning to do, and I want to do it, but I can't do it if, if you just leave and never come back. And I, when the letter came to Red Larch from your friend, I, I don't know, I guess I thought it was a good opportunity, a reason I could finally make my way out into the world. It was selfish and I'm sorry. I'm sorry your friends Rowan, did. Rowan, let's be real here. What what really is your concern? Because it seems like the rest of us are okay with it. What are you projecting right now? Project? She's eight years old, Liam. And she wants to stay here, in a town that isn't destroyed, in a manner that is basically booby-trapped to hell and back. Like, With it sounds job. like this might be the safest place for her. Meanwhile, you want to send her back to a ruined town with no infrastructure, no food, just because, what, you don't want to feel guilty? No. That's where her family is at, and it's not... I mean, it's my it's aunt and uncle... Grandma was always the one that took care of me anyways. I mean, they took care of me, yes, but it was because I had to. Because they took over the farm and I was another hand. But I was also another mouth to feed. This way, she has a job. She's safe. She wants to learn to be like us. Better that we teach her than she find out for herself what it's like and get hurt. And even then, that's when we're here. Meanwhile, she has grunned. She has a job working with someone her age. She'll have her own room here and she'll be fed. She'll earn her keep. And keep in mind, family isn't just the people you're related to. It's also the people you choose. I say as I ignore the fact that Nina is right next to me. And <laughs> Pell at that point kind of reaches forward and rests a hand on top of yours, Rowan. It's little compared to yours. And she looks up at you. And maybe, maybe you could teach me about your god. You know? Liam, Liam is going to snap his fingers and use silent image again, but to make like, ro uh, make Pell kind of glow a little bit, <laughs> like make her even more adorable. Yeah, she like blinks like, up at you. Like doe eyed and everything. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I could become a great warrior like you and serve he Hectis. Uh, the god that you do. 
I'm going to slowly pull my hand away and stand and pull out of my pocket the two silver feather rings that came with the note that were in the envelope. Just one. I haven't written down it was, or it was two silver yes. feather yes. ring. Yeah. yeah. Pull out the ring. I'm gonna put it down on the counter and without looking at Pell or anyone. Like maybe she shouldn't be like us. Because this is what happens. And then I walk away. I'm going to head outside. Mm -hmm. Liam's going to look at uh, Nina, Chara, Nathan, and say, I'll take responsibility for this one. As I ruffle Hell's much more adorable hair. responsibility to take. And little one, you have nothing to apologize for about bringing a note to your friends. So don't ever feel sorry for doing something you decide is important. Also, what's so bad about being us? We're great. Liam snaps his finger for silent image, but realizes he can't do anything. <laughs> Looks at his finger, and it's just like, aww. Hell kind of twirl, like, the, she's picked up the ring in her fingers and just kind of twirls it, looking at it, contemplating. She looks up, and she'll hand it up to you, Liam. Wait, the signet ring? Yeah. I put that in a... I yeah, I, put I think that actually in... Liam already had it. <clears throat> I put it in Kara's, uh, or in Rowan's pocket. Yeah, and she just back. put that on the table. Oh. Oh. Yeah, okay. she was making a strong point. <laughs> I didn't realize she knew that she had it. Well, Liam's going to take well, the ring then. Your pockets before going to bed? <laughs> Rowan barely ever takes her armor off to go to bed. What are you talking about going through your pockets? <laughs> I mean, growing up, I was the type of guy to put his Pokemon cartridge in his jeans in the wash. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, many Pokemon games was lost. Mm -hmm. uh, but, okay. <clears throat> Liam's going to pick up the ring, put it back in his pocket, and uh, take Pell by the hand and lead her to an empty room. Okay. Come on, pal. We're going to show you your room. Am I getting a different room? What? Am I getting a different room? You're getting your own room. Well, Gron can't sleep with me anymore. Do you want Gron to sleep with you? Are you getting into trouble and he'll have nightmares if I'm not there? Okay. Grun, let's go, buddy. You just hear some thumping before the wood beneath his feet creaks and he starts following. I, I don't have anything special I want to do. I'm just yeah. taking them to the rooms. You, you take them to their own rooms. Nina kind of like takes another bite, looks to Char and Nathan and goes, I don't know that we have ever as a party been on the same page about anything. Pretty much. Yeah. It's kind of a miracle we get anything done. I mean, what have we gotten done? It. We started a cult. You started a cult. Well. So, you really don't think the Shadow Dragon's an immediate issue? It's a growing issue. I just don't know how fast it's going to grow. I'm just worried about you all having to carry me around for the last month. Or leaving me in a ditch, one of the two. Well, that's why I would like to get it taken care of sooner rather than later. Sounds like a plan to me. I just know we got this orb problem that apparently Chara is making. Are you saying that we need to ponder an orb? 
No. No, I'm not. Yeah, but I mean, we, we have like one lead on that. Uh, map wise, do I know where the, um, the Marlos thing is? The entrance to the Sacred Temple? I know Rome and Liam have been there. Um, you probably have never been there. Okay. So I don't know if the Shadow Dragon is on the way or not. You know, generally, distance wise, and it's no shadow dragon south past red larch and temples other yeah. direction okay so that was my partial concern is that we might be going in the wrong direction i don't want to hinder that yeah, but we also have, like, multiple directions to go. I mean, Rowan's got this, like, celestial shard thing that she mentioned a while back. And now your head, like... She did say something about that. And your headache, and... I mean, you guys literally went in the opposite direction for me, so... I think in order for us to help with these orbs of power, we all need to be at our best. And honestly, that kind assessment. of includes... includes Rowan. I don't know what her issue is either, but people keep dying Liam around was... her and she thinks that she's responsible. Yeah. Well, I mean, Liam wasn't off when she was projecting. Said that she was projecting. Oh, she's always projecting. Who's going to tell her that that's just life and people die all the time? Mm, I feel like Who's going to tell her that if she wasn't around being an adventurer hero person, that there'd be a lot more dead people? Yeah. It's very true. The people she saved wouldn't have been saved if she wasn't there. I, I've been trying All to right. go back, but, you know, because if I remember correctly, she told a story about killing a dragon, right? To yeah. save a village of some kind? Yeah. It's like, well, that's one village, plus all the villages that dragon would have killed after that. She's too hard on herself. Anyway. Maybe we should be extra hard on her, and then maybe she'll lighten up on herself. No. No, like, no, hear me out. I don't do that's how that works. Out. Like, we just, like, are really rancid mean and then all of a sudden it turns around because she gets defensive then, right? Right? No, Isn't that? that? That's not how that works. She's like water. The harder you hit it, the harder it feels. You gotta be gentle with it. it if she's like your body, you give her credit for. I've been here the whole time trying to deal with this. <clears throat> all right well shadow dragon because that's something we can actually deal with and then continuing to build up Rowan's ego until she feels better about herself yeah maybe we can get her to retire maybe that'll help she doesn't seem like the retiring type Apparently, or like the work until she, she retires, dies though, it, all the fun stuff will go away that she doesn't like so maybe she should just stop her career choice Hmm. Chara leans back and loudly yells for a moment, Rowan! And then she's like, oh, wait. And she touches her. Rowan? <laughs> Rowan? There? You got your earring in? Yes, Chara. Yeah, we're talking about you. Could you, could you come back? How shocking. Yeah, I think you should come back. We're we're planning the next steps, and we're your name's getting brought up a lot. You might want to have a say in it. I'll come back soon. Well, mm -hmm. see, we're kind of planning on heading off here soon. Do you want us to come to you? We'll come to you. <laughs> we'll come to you. <laughs> Just stay there. <laughs> Okay. Well, I need to go get her. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks. Uh, 
Try not to die while you're out there. I'll try not to. Okay. You're looking a little shiny, she so yells as he, like, walks out. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, I'll just move as fast as Nathan can move. Nathan can move in the direction she went. Yeah, yeah, you're very speedy. You I would have gone out to like the garden area of the mansion or something mm-hmm. where there's like a bench. Or... Yeah, you find her near the eastern corner where there's a courtyard um, with some benches uh, that look out in the garden in the back area. Just walk out and sit down beside her. Can't even have ten minutes alone anymore. Do you mind? I'm enjoying the scenery here. Shh. I... I was like picking at a flower, like pulling the petals off and letting it fall. And I'm just gonna stand up and start walking away. Just reach up and grab your arm and not be able to pull you down, but pull you in the direction of the bench. Nope. Seriously, not even 10 minutes. Just stop talking and sit down. I'm done talking. That's why I said stop talking and just sit down and enjoy the scenery. You know what? I'm getting real sick and tired of being told what I want to do. Well, I'm not telling you what you want to do. Um, I just turn and I could. start walking again. <sighs> no, you can't outrun me. So why are you trying? Said you could just sit here and enjoy the silence, or do you want this to be a pain in the ass, cat and mouse chase? I keep walking without giving a response. I'm in front of you before you could even go anywhere. All right, fine. We'll play your game. I don't recall you saying that your deal with Kippen was to also be a pain in my ass besides protecting me. Well, apparently since I've come here, that's all I've been to you is a pain in the ass. So, why stop now? It's out of curiosity. You don't even want me here, right? Right now? No. No, period. Since I've gotten here. Period. It's not that I don't want you here. I don't like the... oppression of feeling like I can't do whatever the hell I want anymore because now I have someone that thinks he's my goddamn father. I don't at all. And was I stopping you from sitting on a bench in silence? Or are you just being a little baby about it? Literally, it's called wanting to be alone. You could have just asked you before you left the room. Damn thing. You refuse to talk to us. So why do I need to talk to you? What do I need to talk to you about? Because you're perfect. You got nothing going on. Not at all. But my question is, when you talk to people, it's because you're their friend, correct? And what have you done to insinuate that I'm your friend or you're mine since I've arrived? Other than complain, bitch, and whine that I've been around. I never said we were friends. Then why do you need me to talk to you? Then why should I talk to you? Why do you assume that I need to just talk to you? Why do you keep talking now? 
because I can and I want to. Because so, I actually do care. And that's fine. But sometimes people just want to be alone. True. Which you could just say, rather than complaining about, Oh, I can't get ten minutes alone. Just say, hey, I just want to be alone for a few minutes. Is that alright? And I would say yeah, and I would have left. How about that? I want to be alone. But your communication skills suck. Just leave it alone. Leave what alone? And I'm going to start trying to walk past you. All right. Well, I'm going to go talk to a shadow dragon. So I'll catch you later. I'm going to keep walking. Yeah, that's fine. I'll let you go. Okay. Do you return back to the table? I don't, no. Okay. I think Nina went upstairs to start getting her bag ready. Mm -hmm. Char probably would have as well. Um, at some point they would have come by and let you, Liam, know, hey, there's some contention going on. We're probably going to be leaving soon. I want to get your stuff together. We don't really know which way we're going yet, but just plan for anything. How much time do we have? Uh, maybe like five minutes to an hour, maybe a couple hours, or it might be two minutes. I don't know. Liam lets out a deep sigh. Yeah. Hell, grunt. We've got to go. Follow me as I lead them over to clicks to get this started up. Okay. All right. You lead them over to clicks. Um, and it's morning, so clicks is not even open, but you easily find them within um, the carpenter shop uh, where you see him sitting. Um, he's on the counter per usual. Um, but this time he has uh, several papers in front of him that he's got spread out before him. Um, and his little hands are just kind of like lifting him up and shuffling. And Triskin at one point comes up and uh, waves all of you and is, Hello. What can hey. we do for you? I'm sorry for a minute. Triskin is talking? Mm -hmm. He got his voice back after we killed uh, Sadie, remember? Oh, thank goodness. Okay, sorry. Yeah, we knew this. <laughs> I, I thought he was I thought he was deaf. That's why he didn't talk. I forgot about the whole voice being stolen thing. Okay. Yeah, you, you would know this especially because you experienced this firsthand. It has been quite some It has. <laughs> it has. <laughs> A lot's happened since then. Mm -hmm. So, Triskin... I Okay, I'm not going to try to like play this any sort of way. I need a favor. I'm Look. You all gave me this back. Well, what what can I do for you? Someone, two people very close to me have just come to the city. They plan on staying here. They'll live in our manor, but I'd like them to get a job and kind of get a feel for the land, kind of learn a little more. One of them is very precocious. She's willing to learn. I think she'd make a really good friend to click. They're about the same age. <clears throat> and uh, the other, well, he can lift things that are very heavy and he can guard the shop and help you with some of your work if you need him to move things. You see, you don't have to, you don't have to pay them a lot. Just I'd like for them to be able to help you out around here. 
you see Click suddenly kind of lean to the side, stand up and kind of like hands on Triskin's shoulder, leans kind of over. Hello. And looking out the door behind you and you see Grund kind of looking in the door. Uh, Pell's kind of half hanging around his neck, just hanging off, looking in as well, um, below his head. And Pell's just Pell, like... Pell, Grund, come in. Hi. Grund leans down and comes inside. <laughs> You're really big? Grund would come up to... Uh, Flick. No. Oh my god. Sorry. <laughs> Why can't I remember people's names? Flick. Oh, I'm just enjoying Click. the fact that you're going through like oh, no. four characters at once. <laughs> Why do I name things so similar <laughs> to Click? And just like uh, would reach out a large hand and Click would stand up and hold out his hand and it completely engulfs but he just with two fingers like would shake. Welcome to Triskin's Carpenter Shop, and I run the Clicks Emporium out the back. And a little frog would leap next to him. So, so, Pell, I'd particularly like you to help Click here with his Emporium. Click, are you interested in expanding your business a little bit? Pell climbs, shuffles down, and thumps as she drops to the ground and then kind of hands on the counter looks up at Click who is half of her size even though she is young and she just kind of looks up at her and Click looks down um, and as the frog comes up he kind of shuffles him forward as well. This is my frog and he helps with Click's poem. I am Click I run Clicks and Poem. We sell very exclusive items. And I would be happy to run you through an interview to see if you would be a good fit for my business. Would you like to do this? And Pell kind of looks up and you see her finger just kind of uh, held out towards the little frog that just kind of mouths a little bit uh some slime coming off from it as it kind of steps a little back in Pal's eyes she just kind of looks up at you before looking down at click and then a smile spreads i think you'll find that my resume is very complete and i will be a perfect fit i can do a lot of things for you and Click kind of nods his head, scratching it for a moment as he looks up at Triskin, who just kind of smiles before looking at you, Liam. And he kind of leans over towards you and kind of whispers, I, we don't really have any excess income at the moment. Um, that should be changing here though soon now that we're able to retain some of our uh, cash inflow but don't don't worry too much about that okay more I, so I just want them to be able to get some roots in the community right. and for Pell to learn maybe a little bit about some of the unique items that come around all right Is this the Jew that the town was up in a roar about? It it might be. It might be. All right. I promise. I promise. As long as you give Grund enough food during work, he's a sweetheart, and hell can manage him. Grand looks down at all of you. I make excellent pickles. The most delicious and delicate flavors. 
will ever have across Feyru. And Click looks up at him. <clears throat> Mr. Grant, I think we can sell your pickles with our emporium. It will be excellent to offer snacks for people to have while they are perusing the items. And Miss Pell, I think based on your brief um, list of things that you can do, I think you will be a good fit for our company. So you're hired. And he like points a finger forward and Pell just smiles. I'll be the best employee you've ever had. I promise. And she holds a hand out and they shake and she would look up at you Liam Liam's gonna put his head on a Elle's head his hand on her head and ruffle her hair and uh, tell her yeah. you know before I before I did adventures I was learning to be a leather worker it's good to have more skills I'll try and learn as much as I can. As long as you promise to actually come back this time. I promise. You're not going to be rid of me that easy. But make sure that you're able to help uh, Click here. And make sure that Click stays safe. Click, I expect you to work her hard. I mean... There's not a lot of hard work in the shop, but we'll we'll do our best. Okay. Now I'm just gonna turn to click and grunt. Guys, mm -hmm. you have a home, you have work. I hate to say this, but we're already moving. I'll be back as soon as I can, okay? Pell kind of nods acceptingly. She reaches up and just kind of grasps one of Grun's fingers. How long do you think this time? I don't know, but I can promise it won't be as long as last time. Well, if Liam it is, <laughs> I'm just going to have to come find you again. And I'll cause a lot of problems. You know, I will. And that's how I'll know that I need to be better about my promises. Don't die, all right? Me? Never. And she shuffles up and she kind of hugs around your waist. And it lasts like a long moment before she finally kind of lets go and doesn't really look up but just gives a small nod mm. and a second later you are almost bowled over as a large fist from Gron just kind of gently for him but like presses in gives you a nice little jovial punch in the shoulder but nearly overturns you <laughs> Liam's gonna take it. Okay. Okay, guys. Well, Liam's gonna put his uh, tie his cloak together and uh, say, I'll see you soon. And then run off. <clears throat> you just barely hear as you're running out. He runs really fast. And you just hear Pell kind of sigh. Yeah. Yeah, he does. As you run back towards the mansion. Nathan, where are you headed? I'm 
muted. You're muted. No, we're just staying in the garden. Okay. Just kind of on your own. Okay. All right. Nina, did you follow Liam down there? Uh, I think she and Chara would have gotten their stuff. I assumed it sounded like Liam kind of ran off with Kel and Grun. So her and Chara are probably just like trying to find Rowan and Nathan or just hanging out in the mansion, like enjoying their little luxury before they're out of the park again. That seems very much like them. Yeah. but Your bag's packed in front of the fireplace, glasses of wine before you. Exactly. That sounds accurate. All right. So a good hour passes, Liam, as you return, um, you see Rowan off, off in the distance, um, can barely see her. She's still on the mansion ground, I assume, on the mansion grounds, Rowan, or where, where are you headed? Uh, I was going to head to Esme. Okay. Okay. So as you're returning, Liam... <clears throat> No, you probably wouldn't at that point. Uh, okay, so Rowan, you head to Esme's shop. And you don't see her immediately. You do see Kippen off to the side uh, at her bench. You hear clanging. Um, you see something spring across the way uh, and get lost somewhere on the other side of the room. Good, good morning. She turns and looks at you. Oh, good morning. Did, how are you? She looks really uncomfortable. I'm okay. Really. <laughs> Have I done something to offend you? Me? No. You just seem a little off put by my presence. Uh, No. Oh, I just. (laughs) You know. With everything coming out, that. Yesterday was kind of hard. You know? I haven't really shared any of that with anyone in a really long time. And I never really had anyone to share it with, and... I guess I always knew that you would find out at some point, but... That doesn't make the guilt any less. I So just to be clear, she said all that to Nathan at that table, right? Like some I of it to... came out. So I rewatched it. Some, okay. quite a bit of it came out while you guys were in the shop. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I didn't get a chance to rewatch. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't no, you're through. you're fine. This was <laughs> while well, DM was trying to remember what happened. <laughs> um, uh, Kevin, I there's. No hard feelings for me, okay? That's a past is a past. And... Well, that sounds very practiced. Thanks. Not quite, but I can tell that the f- by nature the fact that it bothers you, that it in ways heavy that. Mm-hmm you've changed, or at least you saw what it did, so. Does it not bother you? There's a lot of things that are bothering me. It's kind of why I came here. was hoping I could maybe help Esme do some blacksmithing where I can hit some things, let out some... You see her eyes get real wide for a moment. Oh. You want to hit things with Esme? <laughs> well, you put it that way, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the hammers are over there. And she would scuttle down and kind of 
come over towards the area. She's still sleeping. She'll be down in just a few minutes. It's kind of her day off, but um, I'm going to go tell her that someone's here to hit metal with her and that she has to come down. She has to. Because I feel like this is a fantasy of mine. I've been waiting for a really long time. It doesn't matter. I'll be right back. And she like runs up the stairs and uh, you hear a door slam uh, before you hear some voices. And for a moment, you're alone in the blacksmith. And it's really nice. And you see the bellows system before you. You see the anvil. You see the hammers lined up neatly. Pieces of metal, unfinished. The buckets of water. And as you... Go ahead. I kind of walk by and like kind of like briefly touch a hammer and the bellows and stuff and thinking back to woodworking with my father. And a moment later you hear the footsteps coming down the stairs. And you see <clears throat> Esme coming forward and she's kind of awkwardly coming forward and you realize a second later Kipli Kippen is behind her and she comes out like from pushing her forward and Kippen stands there uh, looking between the two of you as, as me <clears throat> right so oh, so sorry I... no no it's all right it's, it's all right we're we're hitting metal together yet yeah? Only if you want to, I mean, I can do some projects for you if you, I didn't mean to interrupt your day off. I didn't. No, no, it's, this is, you guys should do a project together because teamwork makes the dream work. And she kind of leads Esme over and then grabs your hand and looks between the two of you guys. All right, what are we building today? Well, do you have any orders that need filling, Esme? Esme, like, wipes at her eye, kind of wiping sleep out of it. <clears throat> um, no, I mean, all the orders are filled unless we need to get cracking out the axes again. You know what, actually, I... Have you ever made a... small shield for a child? Hmm. I feel like I did one time. Yeah, some point in my life, but... Is that... Want to make a child shield? Oh, I may have someone that... make use of smaller shield. Tried to carry mine and struggled a little. All right. I must have learned to fight like some some of my group. I mean kids could probably learn a lot from you and your lot. There's not a lot of people that travel around and Want to help people just for nothing. I know, I know I made mention of the money earlier with this tournament and everything, but she kind of hesitantly looks down at Kippen for a moment before she looks back up at you. What I've Kippen's told me what you did for Red Larch, and I know I said thank you before, but I'm not sure it was really received. I kind of get the feeling you're a bit like me uncle. Got a lot of cotton in there. Not really willing to remove it to hear the thanks that people want to give you. So, in that case, I just 
thought you should know. Thank you. Thank you for helping. I appreciate that and just wish there was more I could have done. But... Well, there is. We got a shield to build. You see her walk over and she goes over to the bellows and flips the switch and you hear a whirring of machines start up as she pulls down on a large uh, lever of sorts. <clears throat> and you see Kippen stand there and smile for a moment before she realizes you're kind of looking between and she's like, oh, yep. Mm -hmm. And she goes over to her workbench and you hear her kind of tinkering at some point, but she just kind of looks back at you guys. And as you... When we get ready to start, I'm going to like walk over and like well this is gonna still be a little bit of work even though it's smaller and I'll take off <laughs> but I'll do it purposely in a kind of slower way and put it down and then I'll slowly start like rolling up the sleeves mm -hmm. yeah if you smile under <laughs> on my face and every once in a while I'll look over at Esme to see if she has any idea of Esme's watching you and she's like this look of what the fuck is going on right now but she's just kind of like alright she's kind of used to the oddity of her roommate uh, who you now see is sitting on her bench legs swinging uh, back and forth as she's just like happily watching start getting to work mm -hmm. and as we are going and it gets hotter in the room with the bellows and everything mm -hmm. and I'll just wait for a while just like <laughs> nice little wife and I'll look over at Kiffin and give her a wink just <laughs> uh, she kind of stands on her bench at one point and you see her pull this metal cube over uh, and she just kind of sits on it for a moment uh, before you suddenly see her like, oh, shit. And she pushes it aside and uh, sits down again. And she's... and at one point she would get down and bring you guys some water and things like that. And you guys work and eventually uh, you... Maybe you get a, a, a rag for Esme. You got a... Yes, yes. I'll get, I'll get a rag. Okay. And she would go get a rag, soak it in water, and bring it over, and this we would take it and thank you. She kind of stands there and looks at you for a moment, Rowan. And I'll just like be chuckling a little bit. She'd be like, don't worry about it. She takes the rag and um, looks at the shield for a moment, uh, which you guys have just dipped in the oil. And uh, this is looking really good. We're just going to let this sit for a bit and then you can take it with you. She flips the rag over her shoulder. It really does, yeah, but... You feel better? I do. I do, thank you. Of course. Sometimes it's just, for lack of better words, just hidden things can make you feel better. Ah, I come down here to beat the shit out of metal all the time. Makes me feel really better. I appreciate you allowing me to interrupt. What What do I owe you for the shield? You've already given it to me. She picks up the shield and hands it to you. And 
you see her eyes just kind of shift over towards Kippen for a moment before they look back at you knowingly. It's very kind of you. No. You are the kind one. reach out my hand to give her a firm shake. She would take it. You know, at some point, yeah. wouldn't it be uh, opposed to arm wrestling you? <laughs> no, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> I hold the title in this area of the nation, you know. Oh, is that the case? Mm hmm. I'm not from this nation. I wouldn't want to shame you outside of your own home, though. <laughs> that would be quite a thing to take home. I mean, I would say if I lost to you, it was worth it. At least it was a good opponent to lose. She kind of leans forward and just quietly says, I don't really want to give Kippen anything else to be dreaming about, so maybe we could just, you know, I'm not very good at this kind of thing. I was more meaning it for myself as far as, oh, huh. you got the guns there. All right. Well, maybe after the axe throwing festival, you all can throw an arm wrestling festival. <laughs> you got a good one there. I know it. And I'll thank you to take care of whatever's going on out there. trying my best. I know you will. Well, I will. I'll all, like lean back to not be so close to being quiet so it's louder now. Like, well, I will stop uh, intruding on your time. And probably should head back to my group anyways. They have no idea where I am. Light. Light of your God be with you. Thank you. She gives a nod and turns back and shuts off the bellows for the day. Then I'll start walking outside. And back towards the manor. You head back towards the manor, and as you crest up the uh, hill, you see Liam just a little ways ahead of you. Uh, Liam, you see Rowan. Uh, you hear her crunching a feet behind you, and you kind of see her coming up over the same path you just came up a moment later. And you both see. Nina and Chara now at this point seated on the front steps of the manor. Uh, bags, all of your bags now there. And they look bored. You went and packed everyone else's yeah. bag for Packed them. everyone's bags. <laughs> You're out of luck if you don't see your stuff in there. And they're sitting there looking bored with a couple bottles between them empty has Nathan joined us from the garden yet did he go anywhere not yet oh look she returns why are you sweaty you are very sweaty 
Hey, uh, hey, Rowan, did you notice that you're covered in sweat? Yes, thank you. Very aware. I was doing a little project this morning. Letting. How were so you? Not that. A project. What was their name? Did we did we finally get Rowan laid? I mean, we already did that in Yartar. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do we get her laid again? Are you really going to talk about that as I'm standing right here? I mean, we want you involved in this conversation, so yes. Okay. Whatever. I just... If you hadn't what noticed... We have all your bags packed. I can see that. I'm assuming you want us to leave. Yeah, we got a shadow dragon problem. In that case, there's something I gotta do first. Hey, Pell. Pell's gone. Well, they're coming up the coming up at the same time. A Liam left them at Triskin's. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, sorry. I heard you say Liam was coming back with Pell. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, they're at Triskin's. I have no regrets about my choices. Okay, so I'll wait for Liam to, to walk up. And... I'm gonna, I, I mean, I'm already there, aren't I? I was okay. saying that yeah. you're sweaty. So, so you did it, huh? They're set up. They are safe, employed, ready to integrate into the community. Oh, we told Galliver. Nina would have informed Galliver of all of this, too, by the way. Well... She's not my child, so I have no say, but... Stand by the fact that she's eight years old. And the fact that it seems like it's just nonchalant about the fact that we just learned that one of our friends has died in the process of what we do. Who's being nonchalant about it? You guys haven't talked about it. I barely knew Flick. Chara barely knew Flick. I'm not talking about you, Nina. It's not about Liam. Rowan, what do you want me to do? Keep in mind, I have spent most of my life around people dying. My family died. I only just found out my sister is still alive. We were there when... I need to remember the character's name now. Um, we were there when Kendra died. We did something for them. I'm upset Flick is gone. But there's nothing we can do now. And, in front of me, I have someone who needs to be taken care of. So I'm sorry. I don't have the luxury of moping around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Liam, moping. Yeah, Leaf. I chose those, out of character, chose those words on purpose. Yeah, but Nina's, like, scolding Liam, because no, now he is, kind of, yeah. Dude, no. What I'm right. at is the fact that because of that, I'm a little concerned of how you just are nonchalant about leaving an eight-year-old in another town away from things. Like, it's easy-peasy. But you know what? Fine. Death is so easy. Whatever. Something could happen to her. Who fucking cares anymore? It wasn't sure, easy leaving her before. Testing. You know it what? It was 
Well, you Rowan, left her at the store. Yeah. I'm going there for a sec. I'm done. And I'm going to start heading towards uh, Clix and mm -hmm. thing. Liam is just going to... Liam is unhappy because it seems like Rowan just wants to be indignant, indignant and focus on her morality without understanding how hard it was to leave Pell the first time. So Liam is Liam is pissed now too. You guys probably turn and walk in opposite directions and Char yeah. and are just like Char just hey, picks up well. one of the bottles and sighs and like pours you another glass, Nina. I think Nina gets up to go find Nathan though, because he's been MIA for Oh a sure. Time. Yeah, no, Nathan. that's fine. It's fine. No, 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 we no, weren't we like sister away. bonding. <laughs> But I think I she's just going to be like, we got to go find that one as well. Because he actually looked like shit this morning. And I'm afraid he's going to drop dead. So I will be right back. Okay. Yeah, Chara, a moment later, she's just kind of like, whatever. And then she's like, oh, no, wait. No, he might actually leave without us. Yep. <sighs> yeah, right. let's just make sure that doesn't happen. Okay. Yeah, and she would get up and follow you as you guys kind of search the grounds and you see Nathan seated on the bench. Eyes closed over the back of it. Hey, buddy. What you doing? Literally nothing. You want to do it with alcohol? Yeah, yeah, I do. They come and sit down on either side. Of yeah, <laughs> just hands over a bottle. So yeah, Rowan and Liam are fighting and now. Kind of look at it. And, the hell is this? Oh, that's the fancy snobby wine that Nina likes. It's actually pretty good. I'm kind of coming around yes. to it. The yeah, it's best. no bad, and he hands it to me. Oh. <laughs> it's the best. So, it sounds like your uh, talk with Rowan went really well. Oh, she just doesn't want to listen to shit right now. Yeah. Yeah. As Liam Pullet put it, she is stuck in her own morality and doesn't want to listen to anyone else's side. Pretty much. She's an unfortunate fan of everybody should suffer like she does when she's upset. And she feels like nobody else deals with things in any other way. And on top of that, she doesn't bother to ask or cares to ask. I don't think that's totally true. I mean, she's asked. I'll show you. When she gets back, let me know. We are I'm never going to leave today. <laughs> no, probably not, but... That's okay. Is, it, is this not the problem that this group kind of runs into? Is We seem to have a plan, but then we kind of get waylaid by our own, you know, issues and... Oh, well, I'm ready to go. Well, of course well, we want to give him a time limit. We can do your earring and tell Rowan she's got 20 minutes and then we leave without her. Little forced retirement, right? Hmm. Liam is just angry and is not going to give an opinion because it's not going to be a good one. <laughs> Wherever you went to. I'm in earshot. <sighs> All right. Chara sighs. Fine, fine, I got this. Rowan. 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 What, Chara? Hey, we are probably going to leave in like 20 minutes. We were thinking about it, you know? How long do you think you're going to be? 
that's plenty of time. I'm just going and dropping something off and I'll be back. Okay, we will be at the bottom of the path. We're just going to go ahead and head towards the outskirts of town. Does that sound good? Fine. Okay, do you need us to get you anything? Do you, do you need me? Anything for your bag? We kind of packed it for you. I'm fine, Charo. I appreciate it. I'll meet you there. Okay. <clears throat> okay, she's going to meet us at the end. Fantastic. Great. Now let's just not fall down the path. Okay. All right. So you all gather Liam and you all start heading down the path and head towards the southern end of town. Uh, Rowan, you head towards the sh carpenter shop? Yep. Hammer and nail? Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, you would uh, head in and you would see Triskin there. Uh, and you'd hear little voices out back, actually. But you see uh, Grunt seated behind the bench, the counter. Um, and he's just kind of sat back, um, knees gathered up to his chest. And you see Triskin there. Uh, and he hands down a paper that just kind of Grun takes and looks at. And you see Triskin kind of point to the picture and Grun looks at it really hard, looks up at him and just, A. Triskin's like nods. Very good. Pulls it out, grabs another one, puts it down and he looks at it. And Triskin's like, Come on, buddy. You got this. He's like, V. Close. Close. You hear him kind of go into some directions with him, explaining things. And they don't really notice you. Uh, you do hear the voices. I think the voices you're looking for. Uh, more in towards the back of the building. So I'll kind of wave a little bit to get... Kristen's uh, uh, attention and just be like and just mouth pell back. He points towards the back. Oh yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I'll start walking back, but I'll not immediately enter the room. I'll come up to the door or whatever and kinda mm -hmm. hear what they are doing. Yeah, you see um Click uh, is sitting on the counter of his little stand, lemonade stand, and um, he is, Pell is seated next to him, and she's kind of reaching up and running a hand along the uh, little lanterns there, and you just hear her say, how do you turn them on? And you hear Click say, they're kind of enchanted. I have this little, it's a little ball. I don't know where I got it from, but as long as I put it in into that little area, it'll it'll light all of them and they'll all turn on. And Pell kind of looks at the ball that he puts into her hand for a moment. She kind of pushes it around and she's like, is it like a power source or does it have magic in it? I think it's got some kind of arcane magic in it. I've heard you can store magic in these types of items, so... This one, you can tell because when you roll it, it has kind of like a shimmer, like little bit of lightning streaks. And she kind of rolls it in her hand. Oh no, I can... I can see it. Yeah, I can absolutely see it. And she kind of... And it feels different too. It's not like a normal pearl. She kind of hands it back to Click. Yeah. You kind of hear really them. Hard. You got your arms, you. I'll say. And Pell's attention is immediately drawn over to you. 
And she kind of pauses for a moment before she kind of draws into herself a bit. Do you need something? Just wanted to say goodbye. I'm assuming Liam had told you that we were leaving town today. Yeah. I hope, you know, I wasn't trying to scare you earlier. No, I won't be following you. It's fine. You didn't scare me. <laughs> but you have a good heart. You get a drive. So I decided to to make something for you. I'll reach back and pull around. You know how you said mom was a little heavy? This may be a little more fitting for you. You see her kind of sit straighter for a moment before she looks at Click and then drops off of the stand. And she looks at you hesitantly before she reaches up and takes it and looks down at it. Is this for me? Yes. Is, is mine? It's all yours. She kind of turns it, looks at the handles and kind of threads her arm into it. Is this how you do? Just whisked in a little bit there, so see, you want to make sure that it's not too close to the elbow. You want to be able to still do your arm in and out. Yep, see, there you go. Try and hit me. You sure? Yeah. I'm pretty good at deflecting. I will reach back and come forward and hit it. Probably about. I, I'm making it look real to her uh -huh. as well as I can, but holding back. Mm -hmm. And she would go right along with it and almost push into it to clang it. And she kind of, you hear her kind of giggle a little. Oh, that feels really weird along your arm. Is that why you wear the pads then with it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To absorb? All right. No, this is... This is perfect. How's the, how's the weight feel? I feel like I could throw it. I mean, if you have to, it'll hit ahead, won't it? How much is it? Doesn't cost anything to you. It's a gift for me. Is this a way of saying you're sorry? I'm not really necessarily sorry, hell. I stand by some of the things I said, but it's more that to show that. I know you have strength. And like I said, you have a good heart. And you're not going to run away from it. I can tell that. So. And those are things that are important to you. Of course. And that makes. That means I'll be a good warrior then too. Maybe, maybe I'll learn from both you and Liam and I'll be like some badass warrior lady and like this rogue person so I can like come in and like shank you. But then, bam, I'll shield it off like this. I can see it already. Something me and Liam used to have. 
she'll see like a little bit of a quick glimpse of sadness. Typically, if you lose something, you just gotta look for it. You know, you are one wise beyond your years, aren't you? Yeah. That's what makes me an excellent employee of Click's Emporium. And she kind of gestures back towards it and Click would also throw his hands out up towards his fan. We'll be back. I'm sure of it. In the meantime, feel free to practice with this or not. Just I'll be thinking about you. I do care. There's not a lot of people that actually think about you in the day's time, so thanks. That means something. And I'll get better. I'll get taller, I'll get stronger, I'll get faster. And then one day, I'll be able to join you and Liam on your travels. That might just be possible. One day. I'm expecting to see a nice uh, inventory when we get back. You're going to learn a lot under this one. See this crown? Got it from here. You are welcome. Well... <clears throat> I'm not good at goodbye, so let's just see you again. See that you do. Oh. I had thought that I was kneeling down during this, so I'll stand back up. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself, okay? I'll take care of everyone here. And. Thank you for giving us the letter. Yeah. I don't know. Go ahead and turn to leave. She would just kind of watch you. You kind of glance back as you turn around the corner and just see her kind of watching, contemplative. Give a small smile and a wave. She will tuck around and head off to meet the rest of your group. You see them at the end of the path of Westbridge, at the edge, just at the bridge that crosses over the small little creek. Well, I make it back in 20 minutes? Can I take it? No. No, it's it's definitely been longer, but... But where would we go without our fearless leader? I'm right here. <laughs> I just walk over, just grab my packs and stuff and start putting it on. Right, so to Rindrith Manor, or where are we headed? I vote Shadow Dragon because I would prefer to have Nathan at his top best if we're going to be fighting any more cults. 
can't have him keeling over on us in the middle of a fight. And you know, he's nice to have around. Supportive. Anyone else gonna throw in a vote for my voting for everyone? Fine by me. Two votes for Rundreth. Liam. What, am I, what are the options? Uh, Rundreth Manor, mm -hmm. or we're heading north for the uh, sacred temple that you and Rowan have been to. Let's go to the dragon. Three votes. I believe that democratic vote means we're going, unless you have strong reasons to not go, Nathan. Or no. I'm good with going. Great. I'll have you roll perception checks real quick. Oh no. <laughs> Bring it on. Oh, that's a nat 20 for a 21. Ooh. 18, surprisingly enough. Mm. 15. Total of 19. 12. All right. All of you notice Chara's hair is slightly curly today. You've never seen it slightly curly today, but it is slightly curly. And her voice seems a little bit more lilting than normal. With a little bit more energy and pep to it. As she looks at all of you and smiles, grabs the bottle of wine, holds it forward. Onward to Rundreth Manor. And she marches forward. Okay. Guys, headed to Rundreth. Two hours later. I fucking know. <laughs> well, something, something. It's been three years since the campaign started. My We're God. Level nine. This something is why. <laughs> Are we, are we, are we not supposed to be level nine three years one, in? One, two, three. Most campaigns would have finished like a year and a half ago, but that's okay. Oh, okay, let's keep going, guys. 18, 18, 19, I love it, so it's great. At least we didn't have a uh, Sharpie episode. What is that? 19. <laughs> we are not in a good place. <laughs> <laughs> So 76 miles, if I remember correctly, I thought it, are you guys going fast, normal pace or slow? Slow, you can use stealth. Uh, normal is just normal. You're not going to be going as fast, but fast is you're completely throwing caution to the wind, but you'll get a speed out of it. Normal is fine. Uh, normal seems... Cool. All right. So that'll actually be about three days. We'll say three and a half days um, with going through Red Larch. Um, you guys just kind of, as you pass through it, you kind of keep to the edge, um, not really wanting to engage you, wanting to get through, but you can't help but just kind of see the improvements being made, uh, the new structures that have been built, um, some old structures that still look kind of run down and not really much being put into it. But the newer ones look really nice and the entire town seems to have a buzz about them um, of coming together to rebuild there's just there's something about community that comes together and 
yeah it's you pass through it and it, it feels good it feels good knowing that this place that you came together in is growing once more as you continue to head south um oh why don't i throw you on the map so you can actually see what i'm seeing that might be nice right yes okay so you guys were at westbridge here and you are headed down the path you just came through red larch and come off the path at one point um, where you had come before. And as you start to head down that path, you instantly notice there is a difference. There is a, there was already a chill to the air. Now there is a deadness to the air as you start to see a haze picking up. Uh, there is very little bird song anymore. Very little like bugs chirping. If anything, you just hear flies buzzing. Uh, you see the vegetation is grayed and wilting. And any water sources like ponds have turned into like bogs and this area the closer you get what used to be probably a very beautiful landscape this has just died and it gets worse and worse the closer you get and you realize about six miles out is where it starts until you see the large crumbling walls of Rindroth Manor before you. And that is where we were going to take a quick 10 minute break. So, yeah, because Megan's got to pee like a mother. So, we'll take a quick 10 minute break. I can get my maps and everything set up, and then we'll be back. Sounds good. Alrighty. Sounds good.
I'd like to think that on this travel down here, Nina has been keeping an eye on Nathan and his deteriorating state the whole time. <laughs> oh yeah, it's getting worse. As self-centered as she can be, she tends to also have, like, a mothering, nagging quality to her as well. So definitely, <laughs> definitely worth noticing. Fair enough. I was going to say, you watched the last session, right? Yeah, I did. I mean, it's been a little bit, obviously, since I watched it, but I did, did listen to the whole thing, so. Right. so. I don't need to reiterate a lot of Nathan's past. Correct, yeah. <laughs> Which, damn, what a mm. past. Yeah, funny enough, just the stuff he knew is what he was, uh, thought he was doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, turns out those... Guardian. <laughs> I gotta love those fucked up memories. Right. Real great. No, that That's was, that was super cool positive most of the time. Yeah. Oh, that was a cool lore drop. That was fun hearing. Especially because, like, I saw the drawing that Allie did prior to getting to that point, and I was like, why the hell is she drawing Nathan <laughs> on a unicorn? <laughs> or whatever it was. And then it made more sense. Right. Oh, a fat space pony dragon is what she <laughs> Right. <laughs> too when he decided to take Corvette to the bath and help him out because Nathan got into a bath and he's covered in hundreds, hundreds of thousands of scars and it's like and especially a lot of the ones that are on his back and whatnot are very much indicative of being captured yeah <laughs> yeah that and would Corvette kind of was just like a nodding understanding of that so. yeah Oh yeah, what did we do with Corbett? He's back at the manor, right? Is he at the manor or is he still at the inn? He might have a room at the inn. I thought he, like, had brought Pell to the manor with us or something. Because he was, like, trying to reason with her when she was going ape shit about being separated from Grund. Right. But he might be actually at the manor. Or, sorry, the end. Have Elder Eye Chained One and the Herald written down, and I don't remember what any of those are about. Oh, I have no idea. It's right after the letter from Flick. So it, maybe it was in Flick's letter. Sounds about right. We have access to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no! Stop it! Sorry. Yeah, there we go. Flick's letter. Let's pull that up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's in the second to last paragraph. Yep. Okay, so the Elder Evil Eye on the Chain One seem to be the same thing, potentially. A 
I'm so glad you're thinking about this. <laughs> I was like, I was like, my character crisis is over. I can actually do plot things and create to-do lists. It's fine. <laughs> I feel like things keep getting thrown out there, but I'm like, am I jumbling it too much? Is it just, am I just throwing things at a dartboard? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's good. I think it also makes a lot of sense that we're also all very caught up in our own things, right? That's what makes us human sort of vibe. Yeah. Like, you know, there's all these big thing, worldly problems that we should as good human beings focus on. But no, we're caught up in our own issues. So. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? But yeah. I was totally okay with just letting mine sit on the side. <laughs>